This is going to be a look at the Ravens' run game and specifically the work that the offensive line were doing. The the thumbnail pick is just kind of like some fun that we were having, talking about the blocks that you saw Tyler Linderbaum execute, specifically on the Bucks, you know, all-pro inside linebacker Devin White. But it was the entire offensive line doing work and the whole running back crew and tight end. So, you know, this pick was just a, a way to grab attention and maybe make people laugh or chuckle a little bit, specifically talking about the block that Linderbaum did have on White where he's blocking him like 15 yards downfield. But look, Morgan Moses played well. I think some rating service, I forget where I saw the tweet, I was scrolling past, had it rated as like the highest offensive line game for any single player, maybe in like two or three years. I didn't see, you know, what rating service it was. But that doesn't surprise me just based on, you know, the what we saw in game, how Moses was performing. Ronnie Stanley balled out. Kevin Zeitler was consistent as usual. And Ben Powers just continued to put up, you know, quiet, professional, smooth, and efficient O-line play. We had some trouble a couple of times in the first half. I'll show you mostly runs centered on the second half. We had some trouble in the first half with some of our pass pro stuff. But once we started to lean on them, uh, the game really started to switch. Got to give credit to the running backs, too. I mean, that five-yard run that Justice Hill had late in the game looks like it looks like a, a 50-yard run in terms of the effort the agility to stay in bounds. I just thought I thought Justice Hill showed incredible hunger and awareness and fight on that run. Kenyon Drake had some runs. Gus had some really powerful runs where he's just sliding off defenders and in, in through running lanes before he got hurt. Hopefully he's okay. I have no idea the status of it. Been super busy all day Friday. And then Lamar complimenting it with nine carries for 43 yards. You know, had the big 25-yarder early in the third quarter that seemed to really – kind of get the Bucks back on their heels. We're going to show about 12 or 13 plays from the end zone angle. Uh, focus on the offensive line play and the running backs. Absent really any uh, discussion of the formation and the defensive alignment that the Bucks gave. I thought we really leaned on them and, and broke them down. You know, To me, it looked like a five-round MMA fight where the other the, our opponent can't stop a takedown. So we just keep taking them down. And by mid-third round, they're broken. As if they know they've got 15, 20 seconds at the beginning of each round to maybe throw a flying knee, maybe try to land a Hail Mary uppercut or something like that before we take them down and just grind on them for four and a half minutes. Because those drives were incredible. A seven-minute drive, I think two five-and-a-half-minute drives, and then a, a two-and-a-half-minute drive for a field goal was our time of possession or our, our time of possession for those four scoring drives in the second half, which were really overwhelming. Lamar played clean, you know, behind a pretty good job out of offensive line. Like I said, I think there was three or four situations in the first half where we could have done a better job protecting. But as you're going to see from this film, overwhelming uh, run blocks at the point of attack, physicality, c commitment to our technique. I mean, these guys are balling. So let's get to the film. Like I said, mostly going to be Film from the second half. I loved Ronnie Stanley's play. Like I, I just felt like Ronnie Stanley was a guy who continually was putting us in position to run behind him. You know, when the point of attack was to his side. Ridiculous run open in the second half. But watch Ronnie Stanley's run, and then watch where Lamar ends up cutting off of. In terms of you know when he breaks through the line of scrimmage, it's just a down block, a combo with him and Powers. Powers is worked up to the linebacker now. Stanley stays on his man. Lamar ends up cutting it right off of Stanley taking this guy, pushing him this way. Well, I believe was the reman nine, you know, trying to jump back in from playing this like half man type stuff, and then Lamar does the rest. All we got to do with our running backs and Lamar, you know, the times when we want to use him, is just get them a seam. And Ronnie created one there. There's multiple guys that are going to get talked about in this video. And if I miss a player on a particular play, you know, feel free in the live chat or the comment section to point out. This is stretch, outside zone to the right. And first of all, great job by Linderbaum. Now, uh, Vey is a problem. He's a difficult guy to deal with. So he's still running this way, which forces um, Gus to cut it back. Stretch, I thought, was an effective play for us last night, for real. Because... We got them moving horizontally, and these guys on the backside were not a factor at all. They weren't chasing things down at all. We were just dealing with, like, normally five guys. 
in here. And so we were able to deal with them with our line, and maybe we've got a, a three-man surface over here with a tight end, or in some cases, Ricard. Not a huge gain, but just getting them moving side to side, I thought was productive. Powers trying to work up to this guy, and Powers is thinking that you know Gus is going to be here, but because they you know try to take Linderbaum down the line of scrimmage there, Gus ended up cutting it back, and the backside D tackle got involved too. Kind of before the Bucks D line and front. Really got a little worn out. Under center stretch, man, this was beautiful. I thought this was fantastic to see. And I know other people were on Twitter talking about it. You know, I saw this and commented on it in the um, reaction video. This three technique, 56, is actually trying to stem into Linderbaum. And then Linderbaum's reach step is just getting him easily because the guy's reaching himself by his stem, by his slant, right? So when I saw it live, I thought Linderbaum just reached him. But in this case, this guy stemmed inside. But you can see Powers is fighting Vey. You know, helmets are even on the backside. And we got a win by Linderbaum. And Gus cuts it right back off of Zeitler and Moses trying to work this way. Beautiful job by our offensive line. And then Gus, once Gus hits a cut and gets his shoulders parallel to the line of scrimmage, like right here. He's a real problem. Well, any running back is a real problem to deal with. But he runs, you know, behind his pads. He's going to get yards after contact. We need him to be healthy. But, you know, thankfully we've got a long time before our next game. Maybe he can heal up. And if not, then we shut him down for the Saints game and we give him a long time to rest before we use him again. Duo base. And I feel like Vey does a nice job here on Nunderbaum. And it's, it doesn't appear to be a read because if it's a read, this should be a keep. And you'll see Lamar's helmet. Lamar's looking back at Drake. So it's definitely not a read. And he ends up cutting it back off the backside. Because you got pressure here with this D end. Kind of like a mismatch in their favor, if you ask me. I think it's Carl Nasib. Nasib, a pretty good player, underrated guy. And he's actually almost kind of tripping over a D tackle's foot. But he's driving Oliver into the backfield. So Drake sees that and sees the other color jersey flash. So he cuts it back. Well... That's right where Vey is kind of trying to frame up Linderbaum and hold on that backside. I don't think that's where the, the play was designed to go, but in no way, shape, or form am I faulting Drake for cutting it back there. I think what ends up happening on the front side, because we're not reading it, if we're reading it, this is a keep read. And Duve presumably is going out to get him, and Lamar is running outside on the edge. But we're not reading it it's just because on that particular play we wanted to probably get the ball to the running back and absolve Lamar of any responsibility in terms of running it but that's the good thing about the pistol even though I'm not a huge fan of it this is the cheap play you know I love it because it's against the grain of Ricard it's not a run play obviously but the O-line is trying to sell the run action right and, and they're trying to get at least one defender to move in that direction Give Lamar the option to run to the sideline, but this guy plays it very well, and Lamar throws it over the top, perfectly thrown ball. Yeah, everybody's. some people are like, oh, it's a seven-yard throw, or maybe it's an eight-yard throw. That's not an easy throw with the guy in his face, who looks like he's about six foot four, getting up in the air, and Lamar throws it perfectly onto Drake's hands. I think this is an underrated throw, just from the standpoint of he's got to fade back a little bit, or at least he's got to he's got to get tall, all right. He's got to get tall to get it over top of him. I shouldn't say fade back. He's just elevating himself a little bit to give him a different angle, and Lamar's capable of doing that. Beautiful throw, and if you ask me, that you know some people would say is easy, but I don't think it's easy. QB power read. It's a give to Duve. And nine really had trouble with this read. I thought we went at tried to go at him twice with this. So this is nine. He had, he was a little bit better on the pistol read stuff. But he struggled with this one. I mean, you can see he's really still trying to find the football. And we're out. And we're behind Gus. I think this is brilliant, man. Putting different running backs. It's been Mike Davis. It's been Mike Davis every time we do this. Putting different running backs there and having them lead. Gus goes and gets two blocker or two def defenders, which is kind of amazing. He gets the first guy who then falls back into the second guy. And Drake, I mean, uh, Duve is able to cut it outside where we've got a good block on the edge, with I, th I think it's Demarcus Robinson. Guys blocking downfield, man. you got to have it if you want to run the ball successfully. I think this is zone read by Lamar. And a cutback by, uh, I think, Justice Hill. 
I mean, man, he is quick. No sign of any injury here. Moses is doing a great job collapsing down on this D-tackle and then comboing up to 45 to give Justice Hill an angle to cut back off of. Really cool. It looks like you have the possibility of a slant by Duve. He's off screen. So this could be considered an RPO if you want to say that Duve is running a slant. And then, I don't know if you guys, you guys probably lost him because of the frame you got there. Off screen, you got Likely, who lined up right here in the slot. So you got what looks like a slant by Duve developing trying to keep second-level defenders honest. I think we hit that later on in the game, to be honest with you. Isn't a huge run. I guess maybe six yards, seven yards. Actually, it's more than that. Looks like looks like nine to me, maybe more than that. But I thought, the, I thought Moses did a fantastic job all game. I haven't talked about him a ton so far. This is a stretch play that I think is perfectly blocked by our guys. We're going to watch rewatch this one like six times. Gus getting downhill. He's a real problem when he gets downfield at the DB level. Watch how we do this. Powers goes and gets the one. I don't think Linderbaum helps him at all. Linderbaum goes and gets the mic. I think Zeitler goes and gets this guy. Ricard out there. Moses works right up to the other inside linebacker. Beautiful play. The way they block it. You know, Zeitler's getting, you know, compressed back a little bit. But we're out on a guy, we're out on a guy, we're out on him. Obviously, everybody's seen, you know, one of the other reps. I thought this play was just as just as um perfectly blocked. Kind of surprised, you know, the way he played against the Browns on Sunday. I was a little surprised at how stout Moses was in the run game. That was the part that, you know, I really, really was kind of blown away. Kept running his feet here. We all know what Linderbaum is doing out there. We got guy and Isaiah likely did a good job blocking. I don't know what you guys thought. You can tell me. Maybe I missed a, you know, a couple of plays where maybe he didn't block well, but I don't recall situations where Isaiah likely wasn't blocking well on Thursday night. Counter. Watching Ronnie Stanley get out here, he looks. I mean, he looks like he's got it all. Yeah, it's not a huge gain to Drake, but Stanley's pulling from. The middle of the field. Look where his left foot is. The hash is here. The other hash is probably off screen for you guys because you got that frame in a way. He's pulling all the way out here. You know, here's the top of the numbers. His foot started over here. He's moving great. It's really impressive for me to watch. We're we're doing a nice job with Zeitler and Linderbaum back blocking, you know, because we're pulling the left guard and the left tackle. So Linderbaum is going to block back on this like tight five or four, and then Zeitler's going to block back on a three. I mean, you can do that in college and the NFL with your O-lineman. It's a little tougher to do with high school guys in terms of successfully blocking back on a three with your right guard, a three on the other side. Cool job by our O-line to get out there. Guys running hard. We started to lean on them, and I thought really wear them down. You saw it after that second touchdown. You know, their whole defense was just, you know, gassed. Option play, Lamar keeps it. This is the one where Ricard holds. Look at Likely getting out there. Likely on the run, you know, presuming that he's reading this the same way Lamar is, has looped out to go get the what is the front side inside backer or the first second level player. Two to play side. Loops around, goes and gets him. Lamar gives Lamar a seal. And then again, I think this is the one where they call Ricard for a hole. Very quick. Happened very quick. Uh, unfortunate. Lamar angry, you know, as he should be. You don't want to you don't want to hold that that brings back a big play late in the game when you're really punishing them. I think that gave it. It was weird. It was a first and 10 from the 24, and then the next play was a first and 10 from the 25. So we lost a yard after gaining 12. Another QB power read. Lamar's reading this defender. Give to Duve for the touchdown. I don't know about you guys, but seeing Duve get the ball a lot is just, it's what needs to happen more. He, you know, someone said it on Twitter about the run game. 
and Linderbaum, like maybe it was Cole Jackson, I think it was like unlocks the um, run game. Linderbaum unlocks the run game. I mean, I agree. To me, Devin DuVernay unlocks this whole offense for real. He does because he can do so many things. All right, let's talk about a little bit about what's happening. So Ricard, I think, should be like Veer releasing this out. You know, but he's get, kind of given a no read to this DN, number 79. I think he should be releasing out to go get 45. But as you'll see once we come through here, likely is cracking him. And then like, when likely cracks him, it looks like there's a defender playing man on likely who goes with him. So likely gets kind of like a two for one. Justice Hill gets out on a DB and it's over. I'm not sure that the Bucks, with all their DBs, is going to really handle this run game very differently because our guys just won every block. There's just very few blocks that we lost. You know, downfield, we're winning blocks. The crack scheme is working. Everything was working in the second half. I'm not sure what the Bucks could have done uh, differently defensively, the way we ran the ball, the physical, the physicality we showed. Every personnel group had positive runs. I mean, I mean, for real. That one right there I just showed you, I think, was 21 personnel with Likely and Ricard on the field. Here's 22. It's the counter for 40. Linderbaum with the kick out, and Stanley is just balling. Again, Stanley's pulling, and there's going to be a DB show up that he's going to wrap up on. Look at the wall that we've created on the front side. Kick out block by Linderbaum, given just enough of a seal. And then Stanley gets through on this DB. Drake showing his burst. Everything is just working. Is the run game going to work like this against every team? No, I don't think so. I mean, you can't imagine that we're going to run for 200 in a single half against, you know, every team. But if you wear these guys out, if you have tight ends who do their job like this, Oliver combo up. To the front side, inside backer, 45. There's Oliver Combo in with Moses. So a chip, and then now he's got him sealed. Everything working, the whole gap scheme concept. The, the Bucks didn't solve it at all in the second half. I guess maybe on the one possession where they knew we had to run the ball, right? 22 personnel again, and this is the unbelievable run by Justice Hill. This will be the last one that we show. I just feel like these guys up front, are just winning almost every block. Vita Ve starts to um, cross Linderbaum's face, and then Linderbaum just tries to stay with him, run him onto you know this series of what is essentially down blocks on the front side. Mo one of the few times that Moses and Zeitler didn't you know really weren't um, coordinated. Moses stepping to him. Moses is, is getting his hand on the first guy to help Oliver out, and then he's stepping down, almost blocking uh, Zeitler's back. But the effort, man, by these guys. Look at the effort by Hill. Yes, so many guys. Oliver ends up on top of the guy he's blocking. See Ronnie hurdle through there, guys? The same time that Justice Hill did. He's a unique player, man, that we've got on our offensive line. We are so blessed to have him healthy. That, to me, looks like a ridiculously athletic play. Guy tried to go low, and Ronnie ends up on top of him. Amazing run by Justice Hill. That's like a career highlight type run, even though he only got five yards. I don't even know who to who to compare this to. There's a name here for me to compare it to, but I don't want to say it. I, I'm trying to think of other people that I've seen have this level of bend and then not go down. Unbelievable effort by their D-tackle, still trying to ball out. You know, that late in the game, beautiful sequence. Thought we really started to wear them down. You know, the the front pick, the still thumbnail is Linderbaum, but it could have been Moses. You know, it could have been Stanley. You know, we were just playing around with the idea of a bully, you know, coming into your, your neighborhood, your area, and finishing you off and intimidating you. And I thought that's what the Ravens O-line did over the course of that third and fourth quarter. Lamar played, you know, Near perfect in the second half. Actually, perfect in the second half, throwing-wise. You know, maybe two decisions in the first half he could have done better. 
But an amazing game from him, amazing game from our running backs. Offensive line really grinded someone down. Uh, they have depth issues, but I think, again, it shows the the roster construct the advantage that we have in certain situations. Do we have advantage in terms of depth over teams in every situation? No. But on a Thursday night, a short week where both teams are dealing with injuries, you know, to me, we had the advantage because of our the depth of our roster and the idea that we're not so top heavy um, in terms of all of our positions. So let me know what you think of my breakdown of some of these run plays. I know other people have covered them and um, you know, probably maybe maybe said different things about them than I did. So let me know if you think I missed any of the elements. First video I'm putting out this week was about the Ravens offensive line because I thought that those guys really set the tone for the dramatic shift that we displayed on offense in the second half to really, you know, move this team forward from from four the difference between four and four and five and three to me feels like a, a two game difference. It it really does in terms of a two win differential. I mean, I know it's not. It's only, you know, five minus four is one. But to me, four and four after the way we had played losing to the Giants, losing to the Bills, losing to the Dolphins. Four and four after the way we controlled so much of the first half of our season to me would have felt like three and five. And I don't really have a good way to explain that other than, you know, the the multiple missed opportunities that this team has had. Taking advantage of one down there in Tampa Bay, regardless of what the Bucks are dealing with, certainly feels good so far. Appreciate you guys checking out the video. Let me know what you think of my breakdown in the comment section.